Hello, my name is Jacob Monk. I'm living here in Copenhagen and I have observed that the last years after Donald Trump was elected as president, the campaign against China in the Western press has been growing. One of the last subjects that the Danish press and the American press, well, this is only two parts of the same entity, well, one of the subjects that they have concentrated about is the so-called concentration camps in China. Well, it's claimed that in China they have concentration camps and they use them against the Muslim Uyghurs. It is said there are about 10 million Uyghurs in China and potentially uh, these people create a lot of problems. So the Chinese government want to avoid terrorism in China. Of course they want that. They know that some of these Uyghurs, uh, they have uh, been connected to ISIS, the terrorist gang operating in uh, Iraq and in Syria and other places around the world. And uh, the Chinese, they certainly don't want these people to be affiliated with terrorists and create problems. It's an underdeveloped area in China and therefore there are a lot of unemployed young people and many of them are potential terrorists because they are Muslims. Although most uh, Uyghurs, they are absolutely not fanatic, they are peaceful people, exactly like the Muslims living here in Denmark, on USA, on Europe. Of course, terrorists, it's only a small minority, but to contain, to catch and eliminate this minority, you have to observe um, uh, the majority of Muslims to check out where the problems are coming from. And um, therefore, they have a lot of video cameras in the Republic of China where the Uyghurs are living. They are living around 10 million Uyghurs. And it's said in the Western press that about 1 million Chinese including Uyghurs, they are in re-educational camps. In a moment, I'll explain what is the content, what is happening in these camps. But let's uh, stick to the figure. Around 1 million people in camps in China, that is all together, all kind of re-educational camps. In China, they have 1.3 billion people. And one million, that is around uh, one-tenth of a percent of the population. One per mil, one out of thousand is in a camp, even less than one out of thousand. Well, let's compare that to USA. In USA, around 8% of the population, they are in prisons. Prisons because of uh, drugs, because of criminality, because of other reasons. Well, these are the official figures. 8% of the population, of course, mostly black people, mostly poor people, but they are in camps. And, uh, well, you don't call the American prisons camps because the Americans don't like this association you get to the um, concentration camps in Hitler, Germany. But actually, the conditions they are living under in the big American prisons, they are close to being the same as they had in the prison camps in Hitler, Germany. And the same in China and all our big countries where they use camps as a way of uh, putting people away. During the Second World War, we had camps in Denmark too. And today the government in Denmark has decided to uh, start up a camp island 
for refugees that uh, we don't want, uh, they don't want to stay here uh, in Denmark permanent and they don't want to leave. So they are put in a camp out on an island to put them away from the civil community. Well, back to China. One percent of the pop, uh, sorry, one tenth or one percent is in camps in China. What kind of camps are there? Well, there are first prison camps. That is people who have committed criminality. They have a sentence for maybe one year, ten year, lifetime. They can stay in a camp. It's a prison camp, and of course, it's guarded by armed soldiers, armed guards, uh, so they don't run away. Second, they have re-educational camps, and of these re-educational camps, there are two types. One type where people are uh, persuaded to uh, go to, and one kind where people have to pay, to pay money to get into. It can be the parents of school children, the parents of young people who are afraid that these young people, they will get on a bad track in their uh, career here in life. Maybe they have committed small criminality. They have started up being quite fanatic in their religion or something else is wrong because these re-educational camps they are used as the word is saying for re-education you learn first of all to behave in a social way that is why in most camps they have military discipline they use military methods because these military methods they have shown during the last 10,000 years in all countries and all civilizations when you want to have an effective army you have to train you have to train the soldiers before they go to war and maybe the society can be seen as some kind of war for some of these young people because they don't really understand and know how to behave so they have to learn social conditions, how to communicate with other people, how to keep an appointment, how to work in a disciplined way, how to behave um, in a decent way so you don't uh, confront and provoke your fellow human beings. These are all called social skills. And if you don't have social skills, there is no place in China or in any other country in the world where you can have a job. Any kind of job um, demands that you have social skills. And this is the basic, basic kind of skills that you learn in the Chinese re-educational camps. And remember, even the prison camps in China, they are also re-educational camps. But some of the re-educational camps you can choose if you want to go to, and you can leave them if you don't want to stay there anymore. And others, there you are forced to be. It is uh, what you could call prison camps. Well. Since Donald Trump was elected president in USA, there's been a big campaign against China. You know, Donald Trump, he said, we don't want to go to war and have conflict with Russia. We want to be friends with Russia, with Putin, but we want to go in a conflict with China because we have a trade war and because they are the coming superpower and so on and so forth. And what is, has happened since Donald Trump became president is that they continue, the USA continues the conflict with Russia. They continue occupying a big part of the world. They continue their 600 military bases all around the globe to control the whole world. They continue their illegal invasion in countries that 
are not affiliated with the American foreign policy, but they have added to this criminal policy, they have added an anti-Chinese policy. They have a lot of military ships um, sailing around in the South Chinese Sea only for one reason, to provoke the Chinese. And they, uh, uh, they keep on their trade war, not only against Russia, but also against China. Their trade war because they want to ruin China. Well, what is happening is something quite different. But the idea of the American foreign policy is to ruin Russia and China. And therefore, they also have this ideological campaign and small Denmark. This is a country where all the politicians, they are paid prostitutes by Washington. They do exactly like the foreign minister in Washington demands them to do. We don't have any democracy. We don't have any influence of our citizens here in Denmark because we are controlled by a foreign power. And all our pol politicians, they are paid to keep that control alive. And therefore, the Danish press is a part of the international campaign against China. And for example, today, I read the big Jewish paper called Politiken here in Denmark. Today is the 10th of February, 2019. And there they said, well, we have to do something about the Chinese prison camps. Well, what a bunch of nonsense. Why don't the Danish politicians do something about the American KZ camps called prisons? Because in the American camps, there are more than 10 times as many people when you compare the size of the camps to the size of the uh, country. You know, in USA, they have 300 million people. In China, they have uh, 1.3 billion people. Uh, but nevertheless, USA, although they claim to be more rich than China, they don't have the money to give their own citizens a job and a decent way of living. Therefore, they turn into criminals and therefore they go to prison. So if you want to go against KZ camps, KZ camps is very much alive, especially in USA. You have to go to the American embassy and make a protest there. The Chinese KZ camps are re-educational camps and this is the best and the cheapest way to re-educate people to be good citizens. This is the idea of the Chinese policy. And the good news is that this policy is working. If it was not working, the 10 million Hukuos would be potential terrorists that could um, uh, go to other countries and make the whole world a big mess, even more mess than the terrorists we have already. So the Chinese policy is very good. They have case set camps in China, and I certainly hope they'll keep up these case set camps because this is the only real possibility they have to keep China a civilized and democratic society. Because remember, democracy is a society where people have the security to live the life they want. If you are threatened by terrorism, for example, like we are in Denmark, then you don't have freedom anymore. In Denmark, the politicians say, when you can't write what you want in the papers, because maybe you will support the terrorists. You can't write what you want on the internet, because maybe the terrorist will uh, read it. Well, you can't say what you want if you are in a prison because maybe you uh, will create terrorist uh, thoughts among the other prisoners. 
and you can't uh, meet, have meetings about a lot of subjects because then you are maybe a spy for a foreign country. The limits of freedom are being reduced. The democracy is um, being reduced still more in the Western world. We have surveillance control by the intelligence services in internet, in mobile phones, in schools, in the press, and everywhere. So the way that China uses to make social order and a function in democracy is very good and very effective. And that is why the future in this world, it belongs to the societies that are very well organized. And the best exam example of this it is China. Thank you for listening.